morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to the break. Your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado, registered pharmacist number 12275. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and to your health and to your well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. We are here for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products or skincare or skin health products or ingredients or something you may have heard about or read about, let us help you change your life today. Let us help clear up the confusion today. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, you can head over to brightsideben.com or you can go to my blog, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or to products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a business and help spread the word about how important a good nutritional supplement program can be. If you've benefited from nutritional supplements, now you can help your friends, your loved ones, your neighbors, workmates benefit as well. Join the Brightside Ben phone... Brightside Ben team, call the phone team at 866-735-2470. And of course, if you're interested in purchasing any of my Truth treatment products, retinol 5% gel or Truth Serum or Omega-6 Healing Cream or Truth Balm, all vitamin C intense, loaded with vitamin C, 25%, 50%, 80% vitamin C, depending on the products you buy. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay. So we are talking skin, skin health, hyperpigmentation, the relationship between the inside of the body, specifically the blood and the lymph, the circulatory system, and the health of the skin, the health of skin cells, and the health of the support structure, the scaffolding, the protein fibers that keep the skin from wrinkling, that keep your skin youthful looking and resilient and elastic and taut, as well as the molecular sponges that keep the skin moist. The uh, skin is well equipped to be soft and moist and hydrated and wrinkle free and sun protected via its internal milieu, via the internal environment. If you have a skin condition, you got an internal condition with rare exceptions. There are topical skin allergies, of course, but they don't happen very often, very, very rarely. Rest assured, if you're dealing with a rash or eczema or itching or irritation of some kind or hyperpigmentation or acne or whatever, dry skin, you're dealing with an internal condition. In the case of pigment, which we've been talking about, it's so important. It's not just a superficial skin issue. If you're hyperpigmenting, this is a manifestation of a body that's in distress. If you are hyper pigmenting, if you're pigmenting in a splotchy, a splotchy way, or you've got big old dark spots, your body is being burdened. You're punishing your body in some fashion. And this is the, this is the uh, end result of some kind of burden, stress, punishment on the body. It doesn't sound that good when you think about it. You're punishing. We punish our bodies. We punish our bodies with drugs. We punish our bodies with sugar. We punish our bodies with McDonald's. We punish our bodies with almost all of our day-to-day health, our day-to-day strategies, not health strategies, but ways we get by. These are ways we punish our bodies. And then we complain or we go to the doctor. When our bodies respond, hyperpigmentation is just a sign that we've been punishing our body. We've been mean to our body, our body that loves us. 
This is so important. Hyperpigmentation is a manifestation of the stress response. Now, when we hear the word stress, we immediately think of our bills and our jobs and our kids and our families and the new world order and whatever stressors, things that we think are stressful, think are stressful or feel are stressful. And it's true. These can be major stressors. Certainly the mind and the emotion can create a burden on the chemistry. But what makes these things stressors is the chemistry. It's the physiology. Ultimately, it's not the emotions of stress that make them, that, it's not the emotions of stress that make it so burdensome. It's the biochemistry. From a physical perspective, when we're talking stress, and I'm not marginalizing mental stress or emotional stress, they're important. But when it comes right down to it, it's a physical condition. And while fear and anger and grief and worry and sadness, these all change biochemistry, the most direct, instantaneous way to create and initiate a stress response that will show up as pigment on the skin or acne or, or anything else, dryness or psoriasis or eczema, these are all manifestations of a body in distress. And that's not just skin, constipation, stress issue, high blood pressure, stress issue, slow healing, stress issue, immune problems, stress issue, cancer, heart disease, whatever. These are all stress issues. And by stress, I mean biochemistry stress. And that includes melasma. So we're looking, when we talk about biochemical stress, we're talking about food, we're talking about sugar, we're talking about drugs and other toxins. And by the way, why is it that illegal drugs are so terrible for us, but when the doctor prescribes them, all of a sudden, they're health tools? All of a sudden, your insurance company will pay for your Prozac, but you go to jail for your crack or your meth or your LSD or whatever it is, your marijuana. Why is it that illegal drugs are so horrific that we see commercials every day warning us about their, how dangerous they are? Find out the truth about crack. And you see freaked out teenagers and stumbling supermodels. And this is your brain on drugs. And all these pu public service announcements warning us about the dangers of drugs. But prescription drugs, no. Those are so good for us that we see commercials for them every day, every hour of every day, encouraging us to take prescription drugs, to go talk to your doctor to get your prescription drugs. All right. That's just a little digression there. Of course, the biggest stressors is hypoxia, low blood oxygen. And also, by the way, nutritional deficiencies count as a stressor. So between food, sugar, drugs, low levels of oxygen, nutritional deficiencies, these are the major physiologic stressors, and all of them will result in hyperpigmented skin, in darkened skin. And if anybody tries to sell you a topical product like Beverly Hills MD with kojic acid or kaduku uh, plum, I think that's how you say kaduku plum, or cockadoo plum, maybe. Whatever it is. Silly ingredients to lighten the skin. These are silly, silly, silly. There's only two major non-toxic uh, skin lighteners that you can use with any great effect. Two of them. And I'll tell you what those are here in a second. We've talked about them at length already. But from a physiologic perspective, if you are hyperpigmenting, you got to control the food aspect, look for problem foods, and eliminate them. you got to look for... Uh, and by the way, this is why caloric restriction is so effective. Any food can act as a stressor. Any food. Spinach can be a stressor. Lettuce can be a stressor. I can't tell you how many folks I talk to say, oh, well, I just eat vegetables. I can't have a digestive problem. Oh, I can't have a food problem. I only eat salad. I'm gluten-free. It doesn't matter if you're gluten-free. If you got a symptom, if you got skin problems, if you got inflammatory problems, if you got arthritis, if you got kidney issues, it doesn't matter if you're gluten-free. There's a million things people can react to. And by the way, this, is, this should be good news because this is where we have control over our bodies. The most important way we control our body's chemistry is with food, as well as with, and that includes sugar, as well as with oxygen. The way the body protects itself is with something that's called the inflammatory response, inflammation. When you hear inflammation, you want to think of protection. Inflammation is a protective response. And even though we've been conditioned to believe that inflammation is a bad thing, Saw a commercial for uh, uh, some Crohn's disease m m drug. I forgot what it was. The lady on the, uh, the, the uh, voiceover, a gal who's doing the voiceover, she says, we now know what causes Crohn's disease. And then she says, it's damaging inflammation. Ooh, damaging inflammation. Listen, folks, inflammation is one of our best friends. We couldn't live without inflammation. The human body couldn't have survived the two million years it's been on planet Earth without inflammation. Inflammation is one of, if not our best biological friend. It's our guardian, our protector, and a necessary prerequisite for healing to occur. And this is why anti-inflammatories are so problematic. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back.
we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 at brightsideben.com via our archive page. You can also search benfuchsarchives.com if you miss a program or want to review a program. BenFuchsArchives.com and also uh, BrightSideBen.com. You can also check out my blog, PharmacistBen.com and CriticalHealthNews.com. We update them regu- regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. Thank you to John T. Collier and Robert Lundgren who set those up for us. PharmacistBen.com as well as CriticalHealthNews.com. Of course, you can purchase any of the longevity products you hear us talk about on the program or suggest or recommend on the program. Uh, from brightsideben.com, pharmacistpen.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. If you want to purchase any of my Truth Treatment products, go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. So we're talking pigmentation, hyperpigmentation from, uh, this is from, uh, let's see, April 6th, the April 6th edition of the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology, three-drug combo cream, effective for melasma, cream containing 4% hydroquinone, 10% glycolic acid, and get this, 0.01% hyaluronic acid. We've talked about that before. Hyaluronic acid is one of the skin's most important moisturizers, very important for healing. And a cream with uh, 0.01% HA, hyaluronic acid, along with 10% glycolic and 4% hydroquinone is very effective for the treatment of melasma. And this is from uh, Tanta University Hospital in Egypt and published in the Journal of Cosmetic Chemistry. Here's the deal, though, what they don't tell you. Hydroquinone is toxic stuff. Glycolic acid, now, we're going to talk about glycolic acid. That stuff's amazing. Alpha-hydroxy acids in general are amazing. Lactic acid, citric acid, glycolic acid. But as far as melasma goes, as far as hyperpigmentation goes, you're dealing with an internal problem. And while you may be able to uh, speed up the, uh, the sloughing off of pigment, and we're going to talk about some really cool... Uh, exfoliation techniques, chemical exfoliation as well as mechanical exfoliation techniques for sloughing off pigment, for sloughing off melasma or hyperpigmentation, it's going to come right back because it's an internal condition. It's a manifestation of the stress response. And when I say a manifestation of the stress response, I'm talking about a manifestation of the inflammatory response. Stress and inflammation go hand in hand. Inflammation is one of the ways the body protects itself from a stressor. Inflammation is a good thing. Inflammation is a uh, probably the most, uh, certainly one of the most important properties of all living things that repair themselves. You can't repair yourself. Organisms, biological organisms, cannot repair themselves after injury without an inflammatory response. And if you go to the doctor, you're going to get an, uh, for anything pretty much. One of the first medications you're going to get or you're going to think about getting is Motrin or Tylenol or Aspirin or Naproxen or Prednisone. Or now you have fancy biologic anti-inflammatories. According to uh, Global Business Research, GB Research, Global Business Intelligence Research, I should say, GBI Research, the worldwide sales of anti-inflammatory drugs are in the $60 billion a year range. 60 B. And the profit margin on these things is unreal. People think oil has a high profit margin. If the, the profit margin on these drugs, you're talking drugs that cost a penny go for, are sold for $1,000. So when you talk about a $60 billion range for anti-inflammatory sales in the $60 billion year range, you're talking about $59.9 billion in profit. GBI research continues to say that the anti-inflammatory market around the world is going to be $90 billion a year by 2017. There is a huge profit incentive to putting you on a drug, an anti-inflammatory drug. It's not in your healing interest. It may be in an, a pain interest or a pain reduction interest, and nobody wants pain, obviously. But if you have to take a, a drug, an anti-inflammatory drug or any drug, fine, take it. But your number one health objective should be to wean yourself off of it. In addition to... Uh, of uh, being the most powerful or among the most powerful classes of, of medications. They're also a leading cause of drug toxicity anti-inflammatories. I shouldn't say powerful, but uh, among the most uh, commonly used uh, medications. They're also a leading cause of toxicity. And that, by the way, includes aspirin, Motrin, Tylenol, 
and the more benign, supposedly more benign, over-the-counter anti-inflammatories. The reason for the toxicity of anti-inflammatory drugs is because when the body wants to inflame, you got to really, really tweak its chemistry to suppress it. Inflammation is a fundamental response. Living entities, living beings could not, uh, human beings and animals could not survive without this inflammatory response. Shutting it down artificially, pharmaceutically, medically is a risky proposition. Every single health challenge we have to endure, from broken bones to pimples to heart disease to cancer to autoimmunity, involve this phenomena of inflammation, of protection. And skin diseases and melasma are no different. Melasma is an inflammatory condition. There's even a, a type of melasma they call post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. It's not really post-inflammatory, it's inflammatory. It's associated with inflammation. That tells us something. It tells us melasma is a protective, a part of the body's protective response, which means that the medical strategy of eliminating melasma by using hydroquinone or using topical, uh, topical uh, ingredients is not going to take care of the problem. Now, this is not magical here. This is not sexy and titillating and special magical formula, magical cream, use this cream, use this supplement. This is simple basics. Diet, eliminating or reducing sugar, staying away from toxins, making sure you're deep breathing, moving your circulatory system, getting on a rebounder. It's the same stuff we always talk about. I hope nobody's out there thinking that this is silly or this is just airy-fairy. It's not medicine. It's not health. It's not healing, it's the basics of healing. By the way, did you know melasma, hyperpigmentation, dark spots are a female issue? 90% of hyperpigmenting patients are women. Now what is that telling us? How interesting is that? Did you know that the vast majority of fibromyalgia patients are women? Did you know the vast majority of hypothyroidism, hypothyroid patients are women? Do you know the majority of autoimmune disease patients are women? Chronic fatigue is a woman's issue as well. What is it that's going on with women's bodies that makes them more susceptible to melasma and hypothyroidism and fibromyalgia and autoimmunity? This is a very interesting point. When a health issue involves mostly women, this is significant. It's a clue. Whenever you have a health issue, whether it's MS or myasthenia gravis or Sjogren's syndrome, autoimmune diseases of all kinds, fibromyalgia, whatever, melasma, whenever you have a, a health issue that affects mostly women, you can bet your bottom dollar that estrogen is involved. Estrogen is uh, well known as a female hormone, but it's much more than a female hormone. Not, not that men don't have estrogen, they don't have as much as women, but they have estrogen too. Estrogen is a serious serious player in the immune, inflammatory, and protective response. In fact, more than anything else, estrogen is an inflammatory hormone. It causes cells to swell up. It affects water, into, uh, water flow into cells, water absorption by cells. Why would it affect water absorption by cells? Well, cells need to be filled with water before they divide, and this is really what estrogen's role is. It's to help cells divide. That's why it's involved with cysts and fibroids and all inflammation. It's an inflammatory hormone. And here's the take-home message about estrogen. If you're dealing with any estrogen issues, whether it's a female reproductive issue, PMS, autoimmunity, whatever, there's a take-home message here on how you can handle this. And I'll tell you what it is when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. We're back on the bright side. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you're on hold, we'll get to you just in, uh, in just a moment here. I want to say a couple more things about melasma and hyperpigmentation. We'll, we'll, uh, we're going to talk about it for a few more days. We'll talk about some topical strategies uh, as well as internal strategies here in the next couple of days. Hyperpigmentation, melasma, dark spots. This is a female issue. Like a lot of health issues, hypothyroidism, autoimmune diseases, these are all uh, largely affect women. a lot more estrogen than men do. And so, uh, in terms of biochemistry anyway, this is a key distinction. Whenever there's a health challenge that affects mostly women, almost always you're gonna find estrogen lurking behind it. And when I say estrogen, 
I mean the estrogen family. Yes, estrogen is not a single substance. It's a family of substances. Estrogen is processed by the body either into, uh, uh, into being eliminated out of the body or, and this is where it becomes problematic, there are breakdown products of estrogen that are toxic. There are breakdown processes, uh, products of estrogen when estrogen is not completely processed and this is largely a digestive system uh, uh, issue and a liver issue. When estrogen is not completely processed, either through the digestive tract, through bacteria, probiotics, good bacteria, or through the liver, toxic estrogen byproducts build up in bingo. This is where you get your autoimmune diseases from. This is where you get your hyperpigmentation issues from. This is where you get your chronic fatigue from. This is where you get your fibromyalgia from. Once again, demonstrating the primacy of digestive health when it comes to keeping the body strong and vital and healthy. If you have an estrogen problem, and if you got an autoimmune disease, chances are pretty good you do. If you got PMS, if you got endometriosis, if you got a reproductive issue, if you have uh, melasma or hyperpigmentation, if you're dealing with anything that involves estrogen, and all of these issues involve estrogen. If you're dealing with a health challenge that is, that is basically a female issue, hypothyroidism, for example, or fibromyalgia, you got to focus on estrogen, and that means focusing on not only the hormone, but how the body processes it. Now, as far as estrogen goes, the, one of the best things you could do to balance estrogen is to use progesterone. Progesterone balances out estrogen. You can use progesterone cream. They can, uh, you get a prescription for progesterone oral, uh, capsules or sublingual. Or you can, if you don't want to deal with the, uh, with the uh, prescription route, you can use pregnenolone. We've talked about that a lot. Pregnenolone isn't quite like progesterone, but it's over the counter. It's easy to find, 100 milligrams or 200 milligrams a day. Anybody dealing with melasma would be very wise to use either progesterone or pregnenolone. As far as making sure that you process estrogen correctly, there's a ton of ways to do it. I'll just give you a couple, and then we'll get your phone calls, and we'll continue tomorrow. But just so you know, if you're dealing with melasma, you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, you're dealing with an autoimmune issue, you're dealing with uh, uh, PMS or, or period, menstrual cycle problems, you're missing periods, any estrogen issues, hot flashes, anything that involves estrogen, there are wonderful nutritional supplements that you can use, and most of them involve the uh, health of the liver, and the health of the digestive tract. One of my all-time favorite liver supplements for strengthening the liver, protecting the liver, and you don't have to have an estrogen problem to benefit from liver supplements, supplements that protect the liver. One of my all-time favorites is something called alpha lipoic acid, ALA. Now, it's not an essential nutrient. We don't talk about it all the time, but it's super duper important, and it's awesome for helping the body process estrogen. It's one of the most powerful liver nutrients you could use. It's one of the most powerful anti-aging nutrients you could use. And it's got benefits for the skin, too. There's actually topical products that use alpha-lipoic acid. Dr. Paracone made a, made a name for himself by using it as a topical ingredient. Now, it's not so great topically, but internally, it is unbelievably important for the cell, the health of the cell, for the energy center of the cell. We talked about how melasma, hyperpigmentation, in many ways is a result of the breakdown of, uh, of energy or the, the difficulty with cells processing energy from, uh, where is this here? From, this is from, uh, where did I get this from? FASB, FASEB journal, melanoma, which is not hyperpigmentation, but it's a, a pigment cell issue. Melanoma, scientists find a new link between pigment production and mitochondria. Mitochondria, those little elements inside cells that give it energy or help it process energy. They start to break down. We get pigment problems, including melanoma. From uh, this one was published yesterday or uh, last Thursday in the journal Cell Reports. Alpha lipoic acid has an essential role in mitochondria, the energy producing element of a cell, says senior author Wayne Alexander, MD, PhD, professor of medicine at Emory University School of Medicine. By the way, melanoma is not a skin issue. I know we said that before, but I got a call yesterday. And more and more people seems like are getting melanoma. Melanoma is a pigment cell issue, and we have pigment cells inside our body. That's why Jimmy Carter's got melanoma in his liver. So sure, his liver didn't get any sunshine, right? He's got it in his brain, too. His brain didn't get any sunshine either. All right. Alpha lipoic acid, 200 to 400 milligrams a day. Awesome, awesome stuff. We had a guest on a couple of months ago who was using alpha lipoic acid 
for uh, pain, for neuralgia, nerve pain. It's just an awesome supplement. It's a little pricey, and it's a little bit difficult to find. It's not an essential nutrient now. It's not like the Mighty 90 essential nutrients, but it is still, it could be very, very helpful for longevity, according to this study, for telomeres, for uh, melasma, hyperpigmentation, and you could find, uh, find alpha-lipoic acid pretty much at uh, most health food stores, although it's not as readily available as the Mighty 90 essential nutrients. Okay, we'll continue talking about melasma. We'll talk estrogen. We'll talk how you can stabilize estrogen, protect your body from estrogen, keep it being processed correctly. And it's going to come as no surprise to anybody who's been listening to this program that the digestive system plays a major role in how estrogen is processed. When we talk about estrogen toxicity, by the way, and we do talk about it a lot on this program and you hear about it a lot, it's not the estrogen itself that's toxic. It's the breakdown products of estrogen that are toxic. And keeping estrogen, uh, estrogen processing flowing smoothly, the estrogen machinery of the body, the estrogen detoxif detoxifying or breakdown machinery operating pristinely is a key, key, key element of, autoimmune, of, of uh, improving autoimmune disease, of improving hypothyroidism, of improving melasma, of reducing the likelihood of cancer, of reducing the formation of cysts and fibroids, of improving PMS and, and reproductive health issues, endometriosis and such. It is just so darn important to understand how to work with the estrogen system, not just for men, or not just for women, but for men as well. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. Let's go to Steve in Virginia. What's going on, Steve? How you doing, buddy? Hi there. Thank you. Hey. And nice to hey. talk with you again. We, uh, uh, there's somebody we were, I was calling about who was uh, complaining of water on the knee, and uh, we wanted to give some... What does water on the knee mean? You're my, you're my only caller here, Steve, yeah, so we're, I'm going to get to... We're going to chat for a little bit. What does that mean? To me, that means uh, just an excess, for some reason, an excess of the... Uh, uh, synovial fluid there, uh, you know, at the okay. joint. Uh, You're on the right track. What Now, why would there be an excess of fluid? What would that be caused well, by? I know years ago, actually, I had that when I was in grade school. And uh, well, I'm going to keep you on track. Let me, just, I wanna, I'm trying to work with you here, Steve. What is, huh? what, what is, we got to take a break, but when we come back, because I want to work with you here. I want you to see how this is, how this whole thing happens. I want you to think about what exactly, why would there be water in the knee? Why would the body, the body doesn't make any mistakes. Why would the body put water on the knee? What would be the purpose of that? Hang tight, Steve, and we'll come back and uh, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll be back right after this. got a new drug for radiation now. It's called TP508. This is from the journal Laboratory Investigation. The peptide drug TP508, which was developed for stimulating repair of skin, bone, and muscle tissue. Only God knows how a drug can stimulate growth of anything, drugs being poisons. Anyway, the drug, uh, which was supposedly designed to heal diabetic foot ulcers and wrist fractures, is uh, a peptide. It's a, a, a protein chemical. It's now being used to combat the deadly effects of radiation exposure. According to the journal, a single injection of, a, of a, the regenerative peptide was shown to significantly increase survival in mice 24 hours uh, after they were exposed to nuclear radiation. One of the best ways to protect yourself from uh, radiation exposure and, and um, heavy metals and such is alpha lipoic acid. I love this stuff. I've been taking 500 milligrams a day for years. Alpha lipoic acid is uh, a little tricky to work with. That's why you don't see it in a lot of supplements, and it is expensive. And it's not one of the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, but it is an awesome supplement for anti-aging, for the liver, and also for, for protecting yourself from some of the toxic effects of estrogen byproducts or estrogen derivatives. We'll talk more about estrogen and melasma and pregnenolone and progesterone and digestive strategies and topical strategies as well in the coming days on the bright side. Okay, we got Steve in Virginia. By the way, we got a couple lines open at 844-236-6010. Steve, are you yeah. there, buddy? Okay, so yeah. I want you to work with me because I want you to see how this, uh, I want you to, to do this with me. You're just as smart as I am. I'm, I'm no smarter than you. We just got to work through this step by step. Water on the knee. What is the body trying to accomplish? Well, I know uh, my understanding, at least in some cases, is uh, maybe it could be a reaction to trauma. There you go. That's exactly what it is. It's a protective response. Water's a cushion. 
You know, water's like a shock absorber. So when you say water and fluid, this is part of the inflammatory response. Inflammation, if you go to medical school, they'll tell you that inflammation is marked by four things. Uh, and they say it in Latin, dolor, calor, tumor, rubor. Dolor means pain, calor means heat, uh-huh. rubor means redness, and tumor means growth or swelling. That swelling is a cushioning response. It's a shock absorber, and the way the body accomplishes is this by, is with water. So water on the knee is just a, a colloquial way of saying inflammation. He has inflammation on the knee. That means the body's trying to protect something in the knee. Now, if he hasn't had a mechanical issue, in other words, if he didn't fall or twist or he's an athlete or something and he did something to his knee, chances are that the tissue is starting to break down and become dysfunctional. And when tissue breaks down and becomes dysfunctional, the body feels like it needs to protect the rest of its, the rest of the area from this broken down tissue. And that's what the water in the knee is from. So assuming he's not an athlete, is your friend, did he, did he twist it? Was he skiing, playing basketball, sure. something like that? No? I'm, that's the thing. I'm, I'm lacking in the history. Okay, well, we're just going to assume he wasn't. We're, we're going to go with the, the degenerative aspect of it rather than the trauma aspect okay. of it. So we're going to assume it's a degenerative condition. This is a guy whose connective tissue, whose joint tissue, the knee is a joint, whose joint tissue is breaking down. Do you, do you see how you, you see the logic here? Water in the knee is an inflammatory protective response. What is it protecting itself from? Some kind of degeneration or some kind of breakdown. Now, if he's got a digestive issue, that's going to make things worse because there's inflammatory factors that can come in through food. So your strategies are going to be, number one, to cor- always. This is always true. I know you've been listening to this show, Steve, for years, right? Always what's the first thing? The digestive system. Not because I'm some kind of health nut. Not because it's, you know, it's a fad or it's the, it's the cool thing to say but because stuff gets into the blood only through the digestive system unless you're injecting it. Right. So you got to focus on digestive health. Now, the fact that we live uh, with a food supply that didn't exist 200 years ago, I mean, the foods most of us are eating didn't exist a couple hundred years ago, and our bodies are having to, to deal with all of this foreign food, that just compounds the problem. So first thing you do is you protect the digestive system with probiotics, that's the bioluminightly essence, digestive enzymes, the ultimate enzymes with meals, and take it with a little apple cider vinegar to activate the enzymes. And then whenever you have swelling or inflammation, if you take your ultimate enzymes on an empty stomach, in addition to taking them for your meals, you'll get anti-inflammatory effects. They'll help, they'll help break up inflammation. Okay, now I said at the beginning of the program that inflammation is your friend. You don't necessarily want to, that's not a great strategy, but if he's miserably uncomfortable, that might be something that he wants to do. Then uh, in addition to uh, building up the digestive system, you can build up the connective tissue. Now here's something very cool. The digestive system is also composed of connective tissue. So in addition to using strategies for building the joints, such as the glucogel caps and bone soup and cartilage containing products, you're also gonna get a side benefit. You're gonna strengthen your digestive tract. So get them on the glucogel caps, get them on the Fucoid Z. Both of those are important for building connective tissue. And then uh, also bone soup and and cartilage containing products and also more protein. Protein builds connective tissue. Protein's the raw material for connective tissue. It's also the raw material for the connective tissue in the gut. And if he does have a digestive problem, he's going to have an issue absorbing protein anyway. So by working on the digestive system, making sure he's getting his cartilage, throwing in the Fucoid Z, and then uh, also more protein. And I like liquid protein. Whey protein is my favorite. But, you know, protein's a little bit tricky to absorb. So if you can do your protein in smoothies and soups, that's usually a little bit more effective than steak and and hamburger. And uh, unfortunately, even though human beings are omnivores, we're designed to eat both meat and, uh, and vegetables were, you know, we're designed to eat anything really. Meat today is just not great food, unfortunately. And, and unfortunately too, fish is not great food either because of how toxic the oceans are. Nonetheless, there is good protein value in both of those, especially organ meats, if you're going to do meat. Uh, and then fish also is a little bit easier to digest. And then make sure he's using his mighty 90 essential nutrients. Don't forget vitamin C, which is an anti-inflammatory vitamin, as well as an anti-stress vitamin. Uh, it help reduce some of the stress response, which is associated
associated with inflammation. And vitamin C, by the way, works hand in hand with glucosamine. So whenever you take glucosamine, the glucogel caps, you always want to take a little bit of vitamin C with it. Vitamin C and glucosamine work together. A couple other miscellaneous strategies that might help. Vitamin E, 400 international units a day. And don't forget that alpha lipoic acid. Also, uh, the uh, ultimate selenium might be helpful too. Okay. okay. And, of course, staying away from the, the sugars. I absolutely. Guess. Absolutely. <laughs> staying away from sugar is all. You know, if you want to pick three just basic general strategies for dealing with any health condition, work on the digestive system, stabilize the blood sugar, make sure you're oxygenating. Uh, and I call that, of course, th those three points, I call those the triangle of disease. They're always going to precede all breakdown and all disease. All right. I want to get to a couple more calls, my friend. Thanks so much, Steve. Thanks a lot. Okay, buddy. Take care. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Chris Jackson. My name is Chris Jackson. I'm a Bible scholar, and I got some information about that stock market crash that I think Alex Jones needs to know. You do? Well, you got to call yes. Alex Jones, though. You got you got to call Alex. But what well, what's what do you got going on? I'm, now I'm curious. We only have about a minute. Alex will be on next. Why don't you tell our listeners? Okay. Well, what's going on right now is that. I'm a Bible scholar. I've been studying the Bible for years. Now, you only got a minute, my friend, so we'll get okay. to the... Yeah. 1973, Roe versus Wade happened. That was a sin against God. Seven years later, on a Sabbath year, uh, on ELO 29, the stock market crashed in the United States. Seven years later, 1987, ELO 29, which was approximately September 12th. This year it'll be September 12th. The stock market crashed yet again. Fast forward to 2001 on September 11th, ELO 29. What are you saying, of, ELO? I'm not hearing what you're saying. ELO? Well, basically, you have to look from the Jewish perspective. The what Jewish does ELO mean? ELO is the month of the Jewish calendar. It's, the oh, last it's a Jewish month. month. Yeah, and it also uh, happens at the end of the Shemitah year or the Sabbath year when the Jews had to... You know, not use you're, land. You know, I'm just a little old pharmacist, dude. I, I, you're over my head here. I, but I, what are you going to tell me about the stock market crash? Well, the stock market crash, well, I'm just warning people to get their money and protect it because every ELO 29 markets reset on the Sabbath year, at the end of the Sabbath year. And that's why we've been having the stock market crash. What is, what is the American version of ELO 29? What's the English well, version? Well, exactly, on September 11th. September 11th is ELO 29? Yes. yes. Interesting. I did not know that. Well, that you know and what? This is a health show, but that was kind of interesting. Thanks for your input. I appreciate it, man. All right. Take care. Call Alex Jones. He's, he's, he'll be on next. That was kind of strange, but interesting. All right. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Tomorrow we'll continue talking alpha lipoic acid and estrogen and hyperpigmentation. We'll also tell you about two little tiny glands in the body that play a major, major role in skin health, whether you're dealing with acne or oily skin or hyperpigmentation. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. We'll cover that tomorrow, and we'll tell you about a super important vitamin for those two little glands. We'll do all that in the, tomorrow in the coming days as we continue talking melasma on the bright side. Thanks for listening. Check out my website, brightsideben.com. If you're interested in purchasing any of my truth treatment products, it's at truthtreatments.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a spectacular, awesome, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.